I'll tell you everything I said and I'll tell it right to your face. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. First question I have for you though, obviously, you've won four times on the challenge. Are you tired mm -hmm. of winning yet? No, you know, um, cause you know what, what comes with winning is a nice check. Right. And I am not, and I will not get tired of, uh, you know, depositing those. Exactly. Well, we like oh. seeing you win. What would you say is easier, winning a season of the challenge or winning a race? Ooh, uh, for me, a uh, challenge, way easier. You know, I, I, I have mastered the use of this tool, the tool that is my body. Um, I'm now trying to master the tool that is uh, a car. Now that you've switched gears, what's been the toughest thing for you to adjust to now that you're racing cars? Um, honestly, the, the, the schedule, you know, when we, when we do a challenge, it's, it's hyper focused, right? I have a singular goal in mind and that is win this thing. And we are so cut off from the world, anything outside, you know, our families, everything that, that you are like hyper focused is truly the word. Whereas in, in racing, you must be hyper focused, but you're in an environment that dictates a, like complete opposite, you know, like, um, my, I made my pro debut at Laguna Seca, and this is my first race. We're in front of close to 100,000 people out there. I'm with, you know, all of these cars are each worth about $200,000. I don't want to be the guy who like wrecks and causes this whole thing, you know, and, and I'm, I'm the new guy and, and, uh, everything I, I'm before qualifying and, and races, I'm doing activations. I'm doing autograph signings. We're meeting with the fans. We have poster signings. We have the grid walk. Everything is pulling you out of the race but you, you must be in the race because if you are the slightest out, you know, you end up in the wall or taking somebody else out. So that is, I think that the biggest adjustment is being in a very loud environment now, as opposed to the challenge is very difficult in itself because the environment is so closed off, but it's the quiet environment as far as mentally. Which, and you think that one's easier because it's easier to focus? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And and like I said, like I, the challenge requires me to use this tool that is my mind and body. Um, whereas with racing, I have to, we have to get the car set up right. You know, we have, the, the track is changing with temperature and, and dirt and things that, and, and rubber that gets laid down throughout a weekend. Uh, so we're constantly changing setups. So it's much more a chess game mm -hmm. um, there. And there's a lot of chance, you know, we had, uh, uh, we had one round, one of our cars got taken out. Two other cars wrecked on their own, ended up coming all the way across the track and taking one of our cars out of this, of, you know, no fault of his own, but like, it's just so much chance. What's there's chance in the challenge. You get the wrong person in the wrong elimination. Boom. You're out. Right. And you could have had the, the best season going, you know, it's all over just like that. Do you get nervous? Oh my gosh. Like on the. We, we run our like heart monitors and everything uh, during the races and my, my heart rate was actually the highest before the race ever started. Hopefully it'll come down a li little bit as you become not the new guy anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know that it would, and like, cause I, I grew up racing motocross, um, like dirt bikes and, and all kinds of, you know, I race BMX as well. Um, and that's how it all, you're just nerd cause it's the fear of the unknown, even for the, even during a challenge, I guarantee you if we got to, I wish we could wear heart monitors on uh, the challenge. Cause I want to see, I think it would be cool for the fans to see like actual distances and heart rates and things of like what we're doing. Cause it is such a sport now, but, uh, separate, separate cool. My heart rate is, is the highest at the beginning. Once we start and now I have something, like I said, to hyper focus on, which is performance. Mm -hmm. My heart rate comes down, you know, everything. It was so wild in the car. Um, I, I drove for an hour and five minutes, right? That was my stint at, uh, at Laguna Seca. And in the car, it runs roughly 140, 145 degrees the whole time we're in there. You have complete flame, uh, flame-proof uh, lawn johns on under your race suit with a uh, balaclava sleeve and your helmet and everything. In that hour, I sweated out roughly eight to 10 pounds, right? Oh. My heart rate in the car is like 120. But as soon as I get out of the car and over the wall, my heart rate jumped all the way up to about 180 just because it i didn't have the the stimulus around me to support what was going on inside so it took me just that moment and it was it was wild i got super hot i like had to take my, my racer all the way down to my ankles just like sit down and 
you're down in water. Um, it was uh, it was a it's a cool experience. You don't Especially expect that. dumping drinks on on you at the end of the race and stuff. Right? Yeah, right? exactly. So much sense. I get it. I get yeah. it. Speaking of cars and you know accidents and things of that nature, and a little bit more serious, I guess. Have you talked to Nelson? Yeah, of course. He yeah, doing? Um, he's doing good. You know, he's uh, he's a fighter. Golly, that that dude. I get, when I, when I heard about the I, it was. It's uh, com- like not a shock, but a shock. I just could not believe, mm-hmm. you know. But I just knew if anything, if, if anything was gonna happen, to somebody and they could bounce back, it's gonna be Nelly T. He's doing good. He's already the doctor told him he really wouldn't be kind of walking uh, until like three months, and he's about six weeks out right now, and he's already walking gingerly on it. So of he's course. gonna progress. He's gonna push. You know, he's always gonna be pushing it. Um, I think he's gonna come back and. I, I honestly, I really think he can come back stronger from this because I, I think it's going to do something to him mentally when you have to overcome something as dark as this. He almost lost that foot. Like this, yeah. this close to losing that foot. You just got to pick your head up and keep it moving and tell yourself it's not how you fall, it's how you get back up. What would you say were the most difficult parts about competing on ride or dies or the world championship like what was the hardest thing for you ride or dies the the hardest part it was the the mental like being there with tori for the first time uh in you know almost two years uh being back just in the challenge uh coming in late too like that's always weird because you don't you come in with no alliance everybody has already got their alliances formed and so you're the odd man out no matter who you get in with you're the low man on the totem pole so you know that was a that i've i i think it'll be i'll be hard pressed to find one that's going to be harder but as for now ride or dies has been the the toughest one just mentally to get through you know and then to make it so far and i you know hindsight i i still think uh and if, if we could run that back i think any son i can win that um but you know, I, I really, really, really wanted to get that for her. Like when, when, the, when I showed up and I landed there, cause they were already there, you know, and I, they, I came in late, I land and the showrunner comes out and she's, you know, we're talking we have a great relationship. And she's like, this is just what we're going to do. And I was like, she's like, how you feel about it? I was like, honestly, I feel like this will be like the best test for both of us like this will be the, like the best opportunity and the best test for both of us. So I was excited from the jump. Um, at the end of the day, it all worked out great. I think um, I think it worked out the way it was supposed to. I think Tori needed to get a win. She, she has been working and, and she's been working her butt off for this. Like, like it has been something at the tip top of her list that she wants to do in her life and uh, i know that like i've literally watched it for years you know she worked towards that and so she needed to do that and then um uh we also got to work through a bunch of stuff so ultimately it was the toughest but uh probably worked out right it has worked out the best for me as far as personal world champs that one way way more simple that one was come back to make a statement that one was i had five weeks in between like so i landed um came back landed from argentina had been home for 16 hours and they call and they go hey we have this uh this thing coming up it's called world champs we want you to do it i'm like all right when is it they're like five weeks i was like okay we just got i just been gone for two months uh yeah nine weeks just been gone for nine weeks the land and they're like, right, five weeks home and then you're gonna take off again south africa it's like all right game on so five i that that one was world champs was super simple i got five weeks lock in trained my butt off showed up mind right tori i didn't have to worry i had no anything politically going on no drama no nothing tori and i are good i am good i'm here to play you know got a great partner and um Smash! We, we, I mean, honestly, we 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 smashed it. It should have been harder. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I, I even you can even see through. I tried to make it harder. 
you know because like i think a little bit of that was just like i don't know i feel like most of my season wins are like harder so i should make this harder just to ensure that we win but um it was great but kaz and i did everything we needed to do and then um she showed up in the final so nice world champs is all about making a statement and you made one thank you you. (laughs) so who do you think are the most underrated um challenge players um you know i don't Horacio's not underrated at all. I think everybody knows. Like he is, the hype is real with him. So I don't, you know, I just, but I got to throw his name out there. I got to give him props because that kid is is something special, um, and a good dude. You know, that's what makes it cool with Horacio is is he's a good guy. Um, underrated. I don't, I don't know if people are sleeping on Troy, but if they are, don't like you do not want to see Troy. And, you know, he's just one of those guys that he can win at anything. He can win at anything. And he will win at a lot, you know. So don't get him on the wrong night. Other than Devin, who mm-hmm. just won 39, there's been three different male champs. Me, CT, Bananas. We right. all just trade off of winning. And then whoever happens to be with us uh-huh. wins too, right? CT wins and Amber gets to win. Me and CT win. Rogan and D get to win. Uh, banana gets bananas gets a win, and uh, you know Sarah gets a win in there. Uh, then Carl won one, but there was no guy winner in that. So again, no no guy winner there. I win, get Camilla a win. Um, I win, get Sarah a win. Uh, you know, like we all just kind of it's us three guys trade off. So I mean, you know, you, you could say they're old, old school, but they're still very very. I know they're very competitive. The game it shows how how mental the game is. Mm -hmm. because because me bananas and and nct are three very different like physical attributed level different like we are very on just different planes you know ct is more like a rhino who can bust through and things uh bananas is he's kind of got he's got this weird like he is kind of multi-hybrid but he's very strong squatty and then i'm kind of like this like ninja you know and we all find ways to get it done because the game is so mental. And usually, when it's a when it's a mental thing, it's uh, it's because they cannot disassociate the game from real life. When we, as soon as I get to the airport, I like I like step into Narnia. It is no longer real life because the circumstances are completely made up. That's what I mean by it's not real life. I'm still I am still being me and acting me, but the circumstances are not real. Like we don't actually live together and you know, we're not actually friends. We live together now and we're friends cause we're doing this thing, but mm-hmm. we don't talk every day. Do you know what I mean? Like it, you know, that's not what it's so you, you must play the game at hand and you cannot play the, the right, whole right. long-term challenge world thing of, I want to come back and I want to have relationships and this and that you've got to just respect the game, play it and earn your, your respect that way. And then everything else will fall in, in, in line. Aside from the challenge, if you could do any other reality competition, what would it be? Um, reality competition, um, maybe Bear Bear Grylls thing. I think a, a oh, survival yeah. thing would be fun, like something okay. like tactical survival, something like that. Not like America's Got Talent. Or... <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what I, think. I mean. You know what? It, it's a crazy show, and like, if you really wanted to know, this would this would show you alone. Okay, that would be hard. Alone, yeah. Because I mean, I grew up hunting, fishing, uh, you know, camping outside. Like we we survived outside. I mean, not you know, we we did it by choice, not by not by like, getting lost enough to survive. But you know, I know how to make shelter, things like that, and 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 uh, dress my dress my food and and all that kind of stuff. So, but some of them dudes are out there for a long time man that's right. a long time to be out there surviving right that kind of mm-hmm. living puts years or takes years off of your life it is oh, it is tough last question what you got are you going to come back for the challenge do you think that you are going to come back and do it again you gotta get yeah. a ring the finger right yeah yeah i'll for sure for sure come back you know racing is is has been a dream of mine since i was a kid you know like i said earlier i I grew up racing motocross stuff i loved watching nascar f1 you know all that um uh, and so to be able to do that now like i'm just 
throughout my life I've gotten opportunities to do to follow my dreams and it has paid off when I get the opportunity you do it right the challenge will be there and I'm blessed I'm so blessed that I got the opportunity way back and took advantage of that to have the opportunity now to go back and forth but racing is going to get some priority uh you know because I want to get my feet like really cemented in there I want to get my roots set and let everybody know that I'm actually here to race. This isn't a, a publicity stunt. This isn't a marketing thing. It's I'm here to race and race for real. Um, and then, you know, I, I love competing and the challenge is just a, another facet of that. And they, they do, they do okay. Sometimes, you know, when they really want me and, and, and I really want to go, we, we can find a way to, you know, kind of find a, a good gap in like racing and try and schedule it all out. Well, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye.